listening to Africana Woman with Chulum. The Africana Woman is a live show that highlights our stories in our own words. We believe that to attract the lives that we truly desire, we must smash the culture of silence around the things that hold us back or keep us stuck. In our tribe, rest assured, you are not alone. The Africana woman is for you, it's by you, and about you, no matter where you are in the world. So the Africana woman highlighted this week is Kanye Sosibo from South Africa. Durban-born Kanye is a woman with a creative and strategic mind for business. She is passionate about media as a tool for empowering society, through impactful and effective media across all platforms. A graduate from the University of KwaZulu-Natal, Kanya holds a bachelor's degree with a double major in business management and marketing. Kanya is passionate about creating personal brands and content that positively promotes the African continent and gives a meaningful voice to youth with a particular interest in women and the pursuit of ensuring representation in areas where there is little or none. Kanya is a freelance radio broadcaster, professional MC, voiceover artist, and social entrepreneur. Today, we are talking about something that is actually very personal to me. I can relate to this all the way. And it is success, self-love, and being a single professional African woman. Mm. You know there is a lot to be said about this. In fact, there was so much that we had to split this episode into two parts. So go ahead and enjoy the first part of our conversation. Let's get started. Shulu, thank you for reaching out, you know, and thinking of me when it comes to these conversations. You know, I have lots of opinions, uh, some not so popular, um, um, about women and what needs to happen, basically, I think, from my perspective, uh, for for women to, to become empowered and to kind of step into their full potential. And initially, this was just to be about success, but I really was so drawn uh, to self-love as well as singlehood, you know, um, and these are things that I have had to look into personally, um, especially over the recent months. Now, you know, when it comes to success, uh, it's a conversation that I think we have a lot of times about, um, you know, where we're supposed to be, what's the next, you know, making moves and all these things. And mm-hmm. I think it sometimes gets to a point where you need to kind of stop and take and take a step back um, to figure out um, what success means because I don't think success is just one thing, um, mm. and I don't think success is um, one thing. To end, you know, to be, even personally as a person, you know, it, it, it can't just be one thing. For a yeah. long time, I do believe that success has been linked to material gain, um, mm. and it has been dictated to individuals. Um, men and women alike, but even more so for women by society and it's never been something that has been internalized and where you've taken ownership as a woman to say, this to me is what my success looks like. So, so Kanya, let me just interrupt you there. So what is your earliest memory of someone def- defining success to you or for you? Hmm. I think it has to be sure. That's a that's a that's actually a good question. Um, for somebody defining success for me, I, I think it might have been in my adolescence. Um, you know that that, that high school um, time when grade grade ten maybe. You know grade grade nine goes to grade um, where we had to choose subjects, school subjects. And I think then success became defined by what the parents, you know, would define success to be. So um, subject choices, the choices that I wanted, um, you know, in terms of the trajectory that they had seen would not 
take me down a path of success. Mm. So I think the earliest memory that I can I can clearly define it would probably be when I was about 13, um, 13 years old. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what were you told? Um, look, I'm, I've always been a, a, a smart girl um, and I've always had a knack of, of being able to um, take in information. And, you know, so at school I, I did well and I did well with numbers. But mm. also, I'm just I'm just a board of creativity. Like that is where my soul is happy um, when I'm being creative. So when I wanted to go the creative route, which for a very long time and still now is the struggle for people to see it as a successful path, um, mm-hmm. it was like, but the man, you know, job security, and mm-hmm. so it was being directed to become a numbers person. I must go, you know, the CA route. Um, I'm quite talkative, maybe a lawyer. So it was in that direction of of set careers, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think um, I think many of us can relate to the those. I think there are five careers which you know. Then you've made it. You know, you're either a doctor, a lawyer, an accountant, an engineer, and what else? Yeah, maybe those four. One when you've got those four, then then you've made it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I think for me, the the, the success um, journey, um, I'm still trying to figure it out. Um, and it changes. It really does change in different, you know, once you get exposed to something else, then you kind of question and you interrogate that a bit more. And you, you want to know, is this still what I define as success? Um, but I've always been the girl who goes against the grain. So I've mm-hmm. always kind of known that, I mean, there's something in me that I want to listen to, but it was about then just being very assertive in, you know, um, this is what I believe it to be and to be steadfast in how I felt and being true to myself. And so when you think about success, and I think what I've come to discover, which I, I do believe is quite true, and what I'm trying to build on around success is that success is, is a very personal thing. Mm-hmm. It's a very personal thing, and I don't think anybody other than yourself can define success for you. And I think for me, it's a very important thing uh, or narrative um, to be shared, in particularly with the young African uh, woman, that success is not defined by anybody else, not society, not your parents, not your boyfriend, not your friends, not your sister, not your boss. It has to be defined by you, you know. It has to come from inside, and it varies. I mean, people mm-hmm. give different, you know, um, uh, explanations of what it is or definitions for that matter. And I do believe that if you set a goal for yourself, and if you achieve that goal, no matter how big or small, that is defined as success, you know. Mm-hmm. And it does. It's great if it can materialize into, um, you know, something tangible in the sense of a car, money, Mm -hmm. um, a a, a, a partner. But it's whatever you set your mind to, you succeeding in that. So for some people, it's just being able to wake up in the morning and be kind to themselves. That's success, you know. It might be, I just want to be the absolute best um, hairstylist. That is success. The fact that somebody else believes that you need to be an engineer, that has nothing to do with you. You know, so success, I do believe, is a very personal um, journey. And I do believe it's, 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 a, it's the progressiveness of an action to move you towards your goal, if that makes any sense. Yeah. So I think what I have um, seen with friends, for example, is... When they set that goal, um, say, for example, I want to be um, a doctor or I want to have a car or whatever it is, right? And when they actually achieve it, and then it, then they're not as happy as they thought they would be or they don't know what to do next. So what, what would you say to that person? I, I think if we forever evolving. So I, I, once you've achieved something, I, I, the only thing is you should want the next. Mm-hmm. You, know, you should, because you're constantly growing. And 
you should grow from the time you are born to the time that you die. So I don't think there's anything wrong with wanting the next. So for somebody, you might find that um, when you're young, the dream is to have a car. You know, a car. That you just want yeah. a car. Um, yeah. And then then you get older and you start working and now it's no longer just a car that's going to make you happy. You want a particular car. Mm -hmm. You know, a particular brand. And you get that car and you might find because of where you are in life, um, you know, a smaller, uh, more economical car is what makes sense to you at the time. And that gives you joy until it doesn't give you mm -hmm. joy. And then you must reevaluate what now is my next step of success. So I don't think success is one thing. I think it's forever evolving. And once you can allow yourself to, to change your mind or to want more, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, the only part where it might, you know, the separation between what next as opposed to it doesn't make me happy, I think it's mm -hmm. when the drive to want the success is not coming from within. So if it's coming mm -hmm. from external forces and then you achieve that thing that you thought you wanted and it doesn't make you happy, it's, it's probably time to kind of step back and be like, did I ever really want this? Or did I feel like this would be how, oh, sorry, this is how the world would interpret um, success. Mm -hmm. Not being happy as opposed to what next, I think are two different things. And the one just speaks to, um, I've reached it, so on to the next. Um, and yeah. so making happy more often than not, it's because somebody else set that goal on your behalf. Mm -hmm. And not to... Um, and I just want us to just be a little, to unpack the word external forces. Like, what examples can you give of what an external force is? Because I know some of the people that will be watching this, maybe, you know, we've got all age ranges and they might not understand, you know, what or be um, able to um, identify what an external force is. Um. An external force, or maybe just say any external, um, you, um, not necessarily pressure all the time, you know, but if it's mm -hmm. something, and it can be as simple as um, a parent, it can be a friend, it can mm -hmm. be a boss. So you might find that um, in school, you would rather prefer to do well in the um, human sciences for argument's sake, or in the, in the creative space um, and not particularly in, the, in, the, in mathematics or science. If, if you're doing well in those areas because somebody else has said to you, you are going to be successful by doing this, that is an external force, you know? Mm -hmm. um, you take it slightly older and you are entering the workspace and maybe, you know, you want to just take in as much as you can in the environment and you don't have visions to be a manager or, you know, an executive in, in, in that particular space, but mm -hmm. that is a constant narrative that you're hearing that, oh my gosh, you would have made it if you, and then you, you then start to, you know, put your energies and strive for that. You'll find that when you do reach that, it's not going to make you happy. Um, so if it's not something that's coming from within you, I think that more often than not, then somebody else is defining the success and it's not you taking ownership of what the goals, you're not setting the goals, somebody else is setting the goals for you. Mm -hmm. I think this is a great segue into, um, I guess, defining um, what self-love, like how, have you always practiced self-love? No. <laughs> No, no, to be honest with you, no. <laughs> um, look, I, I mean, as we say, this is a taste of culture. I think there are certain cultural um, systems that have been put in place and specifically when it comes to uh, the girl child. Um, mm -hmm. And some of those are not... Um, they don't encourage self love, mm -hmm. you know, especially as 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 as, a, as, a, as an African woman, um, mm -hmm. and so it hasn't been. It, it it's not it's not something that I think a lot of people are born into. If you are blessed to be born into that, it, it's 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 
that's amazing. You are really, really, really blessed um, mm. to be born into this. For me, I don't, I think part of the self-love journey is I, 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 I tend to be stubborn um, okay. and growing up. So I used to do things because, well, I wanted to do things, you know, which is a, it's a constant struggle. But that made it slightly easier for me when I was then able to curb the, you know, just being stubborn for the sake of being stubborn and realizing what was self-preservation, which in itself is self-love. And I think before we continue, it's very important to be able to, oh, you know, to find separately self-love, which might be seen as being selfish. I think there's a very clear distinction between being selfish and self-love. You know, um, self-love, I think, speaks to you doing what you need to do so that you can stay alive, so that you can contribute into the world, you know, positively mm-hmm. so and effectively so. Um, and something that is selfish, at least from my understanding, is something that you will, you will take from somebody else so that you can benefit. Does that make any sense? Mm-hmm. So I've heard... Um the the definition of self love being said as it's not selfish it's self first so if you take for example it's not selfish it's self first self first nice mm-hmm. I like that mm-hmm. no the other one sorry <laughs> having lighting issues um oh. so for example let's say you're in a plane. And if uh, it, Lord forbid, it's, it's crashing, the first person you have to attend to is yourself before you can help anybody else. So that's the same way in how you show up in the world. First, you have to make sure that you are um, you are whole, you are healthy, you are full, so that you're able to help others in a in a in a in a way that also benefits them. That, you know, you cannot give what you don't have. You really cannot. You cannot give what you don't have. And I think that is the importance of self-love um, because you need to be, firstly, you need to be aware. Before you can, you can love yourself, you need mm-hmm. to know, you need to be aware. Because once you become aware, you know what your strengths are. You also know your areas of growth. And what then that allows is that it allows you to know when to be gentle with yourself so that you can allow the growth to take place and you're not too harsh and you don't judge yourself, um, you know, very harshly. And, you know, the, the part for me of self-love is also learning to love those areas of growth, you know, mm. those areas of room for improvement. So self-love is very inclusive because it's not just liking the fact that, um, you know, I'm very smart or liking the fact that, you know, um, I've got some great hair or, you know, I'm tall or I'm this, whatever it is that you like about yourself. That's great. Um, but those things are easy to love because you like them already. Do you know what I mean? But liking the scars, the darker side, the, the side that, uh, for lack of a better word, is lacking. Um, self-love is being able to love all of you with mm. everything. And that is, 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 is quite a challenge. It's not an easy thing, especially because of what we're constantly seeing um, in media, what, we, what we're hearing as well, once again, from around us on what is, um, whether it's beauty, um, whether it's smart, whether it's being successful. Um, so it does, it, it, it does need you to stop, mm-hmm. read, take stock, and move on from there. I mean, there's a term that is used in marketing, which is a SWOT analysis. So figure out your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your threats. And once you know that clearly, then you know your areas of growth and you're able to then start loving yourself where you need to most. And then you become a fuller person and a whole person. And then you just, then you can offer that into the world. If you can't empathize with yourself on certain issues, you won't know what empathy thing is and you can't, you know, empathize with the next person. If you are harsh with yourself, um, you may try, but you honestly can't be, you know what I mean, soft and, 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 and comforting to the next person because you haven't learned it. You don't exercise it. So 
Um, Self love, yeah, it's not an easy, not an easy step. You really have to do it every day. Yeah. Hey, sis. Thank you for listening to Africana Woman with Chulu. This show is only possible because of your participation. These are your stories in your own words. There are actually two ways that you can be featured in the Africana Woman Network. You can either be a guest blogger on the Africana Woman blog or a guest speaker on the Africana Woman podcast. If any of these interest you, please contact me on africanawoman at gmail.com to learn more about the procedures to be approved. Now, back to the show. Kanya, so I just want to take us back because you mentioned there are some systems in our culture that don't allow us to be exposed to self-love from an early age. So I think maybe let's name some of those systems so that people um, are aware. Because I feel like when, when you know, when you're able to name a thing, then you can really move on and decide what you want to do with it. Look, I think there's there's one thing that African culture and I think it had it had roots in 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 in, in greatness, um, mm-hmm. and that is humble. Mm. Right now, I for me, I, I I I my perspective, I feel the being humble thing has uh, robbed a lot of young women of wanting more for themselves and loving themselves. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and for example, so if you are a young girl and you would be like, ooh, I'm going to be Miss World one day, and then somebody would be like, what's so special about you? You're not so pretty. Because we must teach you to be humble because you can't walk around here thinking, Wuti, you're the hottest girl around. Um, then you say things like, um, I'm going to be on TV. You know, it's like, what makes you special? I mean, just calm yourself down, you know, all those kind of things. So... That's one of the things that I've seen culturally um, that the misuse of what humbleness is. You know, mm. There's nothing wrong with knowing what you know about yourself and then, you know, not being confident in it uh, um, so that you know what you know, but not using it to put down other people. So I understand mm. the concept of how that could have been done, uh, but I do for me, believe that it has been misused in terms of you must be humble. If you know that you are a good singer, you need to know that you're a good singer so that you can have the confidence because you need to trick your mind to tell yourself that you're confident in doing it until you get the confidence. But if you're constantly being shy and coy about it, like there's friends, I'm sure that you know, that can dance well, that can sing well, that can do something well. And when you ask them, so, you know, sing for us, they're not going to just break out a song for you, they'll first be like, oh, so I'm not mad and, oh, no, guys. But you can sing too. Um, and that in the real world then does kind of put you in the back step all the time because somebody else from a different culture who has a certain different value system that guides that is then going to outshine you in that moment and that could have been your opportunity. Mm, mm, yeah. I agree. I think something else that um, I was having a conversation with a friend, she was talking about how there is no concept of um, allowing each other to have space. You know, when you just need to take time for yourself, but you know, we're, all, we're always in community, we're always in each other's business, we're always wanting to to conversate and just always just, we don't allow ourselves to just have enough time for someone to say okay do you know what I need some quiet time or I need some space let me go and sit outside or let me go and uh, you know sit in the bedroom or whatever it is the, that the culture just doesn't allow for that or I mean that's just the way we grew up anyway uh, yes I agree and I think it's not all bad. So that is, is very necessary because I think that's why we have the kind of support system that we have. And that's why even with all the poverty and all the negative things that have come across, uh, we've come across as, 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 as you know, um, Africans in, in various ways, we have able, we're still able to kind of soldier on. It's because of the community. Mm-hmm. However, cannot, if you just want to focus on the one, 
without mm-hmm. the other. Hi, mommy. Sorry. <laughs> uh, to focus on the one without the other, you then are not going to be able to, you know, give the full compliments in its fullness of being able to do it all. And it does become difficult, especially as a, a young female, once again, to be able to want to just check out in a family and be like, I just need time by myself. What do you want to do? Are you going to boys? I mean, like, you know, there, there is all of that, um, that, that is then there's other things, but it cannot be taken for what it is that I just mm-hmm. need time for myself. And again, from a cultural perspective, in my experience, um, and that is, there's so much to do as well as a young girl child, African girl child, you know, mm. um, the cleaning, the cooking, the school, there's this, there's that. So you, there's, even if you would want to and you feel you are aware that you need that space, you cannot articulate that you need that space because you're being lazy. You know, when you are young and you just say you're tired, the question is, why are you tired? You just woke up, you know, and it's right. So you have a job. thing. You know, <laughs> and it's not always Why is that? you know, it's yeah. a mental, you know, the, the fact that you cannot check out and give yourself time, and that for me, you know, takes us, you know, to something that you, the next part of self love, you know, is that mm-hmm. when you take a time out in a day to do something that you love. And you're constantly giving to other people. You're going to get to a point where, listen, there's nothing left, which means you are going to die young or old age, basically. You know? Because when you do want to just take time, you know, you're lazy, or it gets even better. It gets even better. It's not even about you anymore. Mm-hmm. It then becomes a, um, is this what you're going to do at the in-laws? You know? Exactly. Is this is what you do? It, it, it just then becomes about people that we don't even know yet. <laughs> um, it's so weird. Like, you know? no man will want you. This laziness. No man will want you. To a friend of mine that I was speaking to, that it seems that as as women, and I think this is all women, but even more so, I can speak to myself being an African woman, you have to live two lives. You first go through the first state life as you're living other people's expectations, dreams, etc., and there's a breaking point where then you must check in and be like, okay, I'm done. You know, I'm not living for a parent, I'm not living for a child, a boyfriend, a husband, a sister, a brother, a boss, and we take, and that kicks in. For some people, it's in their 30s, some is in their 40s, and so that happens sometimes, and it, it, it's, it's, yeah. I don't know if it's unique to us as Africans, but we can only speak because that is our, this is our thing. Uh, I want to know a little bit about your self-love journey. Like, what what do you do to show yourself self-love? Ah. Child. Uh, for one, I, I became very, very aware of how I speak to myself. Um, but actually, let me take it a step back. Um, I became aware of the words and I, and the voices I was hearing. Mm. I had to stop myself and be like, the voices that I'm hearing are these, is this actually my inner voice, firstly? Mm. And if not, whose voice is it? And how do I then uh, mm-hmm. group? And so the inner voice, how I talk to myself, because I can be very, 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 very hard on myself, what I expect of myself. Um, and then exercise. I was able to find out that, you know, I love exercise. Like, I really like being outdoors. I like running. Um, and I like even things like eating, you know, certain types of food. It's not because I'm on a diet or anything. Those foods just make me happy. It just happens to be foods that more often than not are healthy. Um, the working out as well, not because I'm trying to lose weight or anything. Sometimes, yes, because, wow, winter. Um, but it's, it's just, it's, it's what makes me happy. Being outside and just feeling, you know, setting those little goals, as I said before, my version of success is, you know, saying I want to run 5Ks, sometimes very difficult, and then I do it, and I'm like, woohoo. Um, so for me, exercise has definitely been my self, um, self-love journey. Um, the, 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 
the food that I eat has also spoken to the journey of of of, of self love. Um, and just not, you know, this is I don't know. It's a, it's going to be a bit yeah, it could be controversial, you know. And mm-hmm. learning not to do things out of duty. Mm. I don't believe doing things out of duty mm-hmm. because I think that breeds. So part of my self love has been, I will do something because. I want to do it because then I can acknowledge this decision and the choice. I'm accountable to it and I'm able to do it. Mm-hmm. And that has freed me, in, you know, um, and in, in as much as that it's given me freedom, it's also kept me accountable to myself because I can't blame the next person. So if I'm doing something out of duty, I, will, I can then turn back and have, you know, issues with you because Chulu made me or Chulu whatever. I didn't want to do it. It was my duty. But I've really taken the responsibility of I'm doing it because I want to. And so the freedom that comes with that um, is amazing, but also the responsibility that I can never blame anybody else for what I've done mm. because mm. I'm comfortable because nobody forced me to do it. So mm. um, that for me, and I'm still learning other ways of, 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 of self-love. And one of the ways that I'm trying to work on now is letting go of, who I was, the image. You know, sometimes you hold yourself to a, a certain part where you thought you peaked. Mm-hmm. Hold on to that. Um, so I'm growing, and I was very athletic um, growing up. Um, you know, had a you know great physique, and yeah, man, the thirties kicked in, and uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so now I have to learn to deal with the physical. Self love. I think in terms mm. of mentally um, and emotionally, I, 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 I'm, I'm kind of I've got the knack in that, but I have to learn. I'm learning the the physical self love to love myself. Mm. Um, to love figures me. You know, the curves are out. <laughs> um, yeah, and there's, there's there's so much change that's taking place. Um, and also based on the industry that I'm in. Um, that's true. The certain, um, and I'm very much, you know, the braids girl. I did all of this for you, you know, so that I can look, you know, kind of cute. Um, but yeah, just you know, learning to, you know, you know the the curves, you know, um, you know places where it used to be a six pack and there was literally zero body fat. There's fat now, you know. <laughs> and you have to be okay with it, yeah. You know, to just let go mm-hmm. of that I used to be. So there's different stages of self-love, but it yeah. starts uh, from the inside and then you start the ripple effect, uh, effect rather, and then you get to the point where physically and you're just like, okay, I'm good to go, you know? Mm-hmm. If I can get back to um, And maybe can I just clarify this about self-love? It's not... Okay, really- I've got a question for you though from um, our audience. Okay. Yes. So the question is, Kanya, do you not find that there's an intersection with duty as life requires and the desire? The desire to do so? Mm -hmm. I'll answer it um, based the way that I can, what I think um, the question is is asking. Mm -hmm. It definitely is an intersection. And I think there is duty in the sense of what needs to be done in the contribution that you need to put into the world, right? But a lot of times, the kind of things that put us in positions of resentment or positions of not uh, maximizing our full potential um, are usually not life-defining things or life-threatening things, if that makes any sense, you know? So the duty to say that it is my duty to get married. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That is, that's not a life of death. Um, it, it, uh, a duty to, um, and again, this could be controversial, a duty to look after um, a grown sibling. Not a duty. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, I believe, you know, help, yes, you must help. But don't enable negative behavior. 
you know, mm. they say simply, don't give, you don't have to, help does not mean you're giving somebody a fish. By teaching somebody how to fish, that is actually the most sustainable way of helping someone. So I think sometimes the words duty are used so that people can, um, you know, kind of sidestep their responsibilities in some ways. Um, so mm-hmm. there is an intersection. And the duty is the duty for you to be real with yourself. Because I always say, if you are a Christian or a believer, um, a, a, you know, as I am, you will need to, the only person you're going to account for is you. Mm-hmm. And so the duty, first of all, is a duty to be you. And it cannot be that you want to hold on to duty if it's going to kill you. So there's a lot of people who... Um, know that they they get into debt because the duty is to look after the family. Yeah. Because you know I mean? it's not sustainable. Uh, there are people whose duty is to um you know you know do everything around the household. If it's killing you, it's not helping anybody, you know. So I, I don't know if you you're getting in if that makes any sense um to you. I'm not do you know who asked the question? It was Mali yeah, but I think she she's Molly Mouth, is that a good answer? Please say yes, no. <laughs> okay. You wanted to clarify something about self love and then we'll move the conversation. Um oh yes. With self love, I think it's very important to not say I'm Kanya, this is me and this is what it is, and just it's just the way that it is. And this is, you know, self-love. That is not exercising self-love, right? Self-love means, as I, as I said, is that there's still room for improvement. There's always mm. room for improvement. Um, I'm going to take it to something as simple as, or maybe as obvious as physical appearance. You know what I mean? If you are doing something, um, maybe you're not taking care of your of your skin, or you're not eating, you're not bathing, you know, <laughs> and you're not, and you're not, um, you know, eating healthy. You need to be aware that yes, you love that kind of food, but it is poisonous. It's doing something to you. So it's not to say to yourself, love yourself the way that you are when you are killing yourself slowly. So mm. yes, accept yourself where you are, where, but understand that there's always room for improvement. And I think that's definitely something of, of that we also always should be aware of, um, that it, you must not abuse self-love or use self-love to enable negative um, behavior and negative um, mm-hmm. processes. In yeah. I really hope you enjoyed this conversation with Kanya. And remember, this is just part one. We are going to have a second part next week. So make sure you tune in. Now, these are my top three takeaways so far. Practicing self-preservation is a form of self-love. Number two, when you are overwhelmed, just stop, breathe, take stock, and then move on. Number three, you are fat is not a greeting, (laughs) y'all. So if you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe on iTunes, Google, Snitcher, Pandora, Amazon, or wherever you get your podcasts. Click that subscribe button. You will be helping us so much if you first subscribed, gave us a five-star rating, and then reviewed the podcast. We would love to hear what you thought about this episode. I personally love to talk to you guys. So you can find me on social media at Chulu by Design, or you can come on over to the Africana Woman Tribe Facebook group, and we can dive deeper into these topics. So see you next week for part two of the discussion around success, self-love, and being a professional single African woman. Remember, my hope is that you love yourself, flaws and all, and attract the life that you desire. This has been a production of Orlando Creative Media. 
You can find out more about their services on www.ulendocreative.com. <laughs>